But when you actually have total control over your life and you can do whatever you want, now you have to like relearn how to be happy. You have to relearn, you have to learn how to live as a human being because you've basically been a slave for your whole life. And you don't just get happy because you're not doing the things that you hate anymore. So like at nighttime, I'm not just automatically happy or I'm not just automatically happy because um, I, I, I take the day off. Okay, so I had to readjust and I had to really dig into what makes me happy and create, you know, really become aware of that and create a lifestyle around that. And that was actually a big adjustment after the first month or first two months where I was just in heaven because I was like, man, I get to live here and it's so great. Okay, so big adjustments and you got to manage your expectations properly. Okay. Um, like I'm writing, I'm writing the article, I'm doing this video to, to you right now and it's been a beautiful sunny day. It's warm, but I'm sitting in the air-conditioned apartment. Four to five of my buddies out here in uh, Asia are in different cities right now. And, but nothing stops the grind of the hustle, okay? Right, like, it's, it, the, you've gotta get the right expectations. You gotta come out here and be like, look, I'm, I'm out here to grind, I'm out here to work, and I'm prepared, and I manage my expectations, okay? I'm not thinking it's, it's pure paradise, and every day is gonna be perfect. Okay, you need to be serious to make it work. And there's some criteria that you should have. This is, this is what I would recommend before anybody would decide to come out here. Over 25, okay, you're over 25. Um, I've only met two guys who, who, meet, who meet the exception. Uh, number one is Brian. He's got a blog, losertowinner.com. He's, he's been making a fortune on AliExpress drop shipping. My, my other exception is my buddy Josh, who's 20. Very young, but he's very mature for his age. He's a hard worker. No one else that I've met under 30, maybe a couple other guys, but very few um, were cut out for the lifestyle. They just, they didn't have the grind. They didn't have the hustle. They didn't have that obsession with business success. And if you don't have that, you're going to, you're going to be going home because it's too easy to get sucked into um, the lifestyle of having fun. And it's too easy to get sucked into the lifestyle of traveling and then not working on your business. Okay, guys are, who are under 25 are notoriously unstable. Uh, when I worked in a currency brokerage job and a sales job, we wouldn't hire guys under 25 without reason because they'd work there for three months and they'd be all excited and they'd be, they'd be the most motivated guy in the office. And then he'd just disappear, you know, because the, I don't know whether it's the millennial generation or just the fact that the guy's young. You just, most guys just haven't become solid. You just haven't become disciplined and you haven't realized how hard life really is. So you're looking for the easy route. You're like, oh, okay, you know, F Thailand, I'm going to Bali. Maybe that's where the paradise is. And then Bali didn't work, so I'm going here. And your expectations are all over the world and you're just not stable and consistent enough to really do what it takes to take care of your business. Uh, your business income needs to be at least middle class, ideally upper class, upper middle class for your destination. So like Chiang Mai, 2K a month, $2,000 a month in business income is what, what, what you should be looking at. Um, I, you know, I, ideally the more the better, but 2K a month and you're cruising, you're like, you know, you're upper middle class um, or middle class, you know, just comfortable. You're comfortable. I mean, I think a, a good doctor will make three that three K a month here. So, you know, that, that, that shows you where you need to be. Um, you need a solid safety net. Okay. I'm talking $20,000 in savings. Um, obviously that two K a month is that I'm talking about is consistent revenue. It's not like you just made two K one month. It's two K consistent, uh, 20 K as a safety net. Um, if you're moving somewhere more expensive, like Eastern Europe or some parts of South America, then again, adjust that 2K a month to whatever, whatever like a comfortable middle-class living is there. Okay, I see guys who are like, how to live in Chiang Mai for $500. Don't be one of those guys, man. You're gonna be living on a razor's edge of like any small thing goes wrong in your business, you're going home. And you're probably gonna have to beg your parents for a plane ticket because you're not gonna be able to afford one because you didn't save any money. Do not do that, right? You wanna make the move permanent so you're talking about like six months or a year of like consistent 2K a month, at least 20 grand in the bank, really make it permanent. Okay, you've got a solid psychological foundation. So that goes back to the guy who I'm talking about as being, who's disciplined. 
Um, no recent history of major depression or anxiety. When I was going through my major depression, when I was like 19 or 20, I didn't have the option to come out to a place like Chiang Mai, but I definitely wouldn't have been cut out for it. No way. I mean, I didn't have my shit together at 20 at all, okay? So you got to be stable and psychologically secure. Your major depression, your major anxiety has to become, has to be behind you. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in a foreign culture not, and for the first you know, couple of weeks, you're not going to have any friends and, and you know, you really need to be strong psychologically to be able to do it because it's not like, it's not like you're just moving to Australia and you got a job in Australia and the company is going to help you with your visa. No, you're coming out here with no safety net, you know, in a country that has different views of human rights, you're making, you're surviving all in your business, you got to build a new social circle. I mean, it's, it's real shit here, okay? So you gotta be psychologically secure. Um, you have to have a burning desire to succeed, okay? There's no other way. And you have to, I, I suggest getting as much credit as you can, as much credit cards while you still have a job, just in case. Uh, I also suggest that you have access to your country's banking system, you know, all the numbers to call in case something goes wrong with your banking. And overall, most guys should not become location independent. Like when I say business ownership is maybe for 1% of guys, maybe 10% at the most, same thing with location independence. In fact, maybe even less, maybe even less than that. Uh, it really takes a certain type of guy. And I'm not saying that that type of guy is special. I'm not saying that I'm special because I can do that. There are a lot of, a lot of my friends back home who are really successful think I'm crazy for coming out here and they just wouldn't want to do it. Um, they just wouldn't want to leave all their things behind. It just takes a different type of personality and you really have to be disciplined. You really have to have all that criteria. Okay. So that's the criteria. The prep work that you need is, is again, you need the, the psychological prep and that's mainly going to be just powering through your fears. You're going to have all kinds of unfounded fears that, that aren't going to happen and just just tell those fears to be quiet. Watch my seven part series on how to fight fear. And you're gonna have a bit of guilt of like, I definitely had guilt um, of leaving my mom behind, but I call her every week and I told her that when she gets to a certain age, I'm gonna take care of her and that's what I'm gonna do. And for now, for me to get my business where I wanna be, she, you know, she understands that I have to be out here and for me to have the lifestyle I want, I have to be out here. But Eventually, I'm either going to get my mom out here or going to get my mom to wherever I am or set something up so that I can take care of her. Um, but I wouldn't recommend doing what I did, which is tell your family and everybody two years in advance of your plans because there's like two years of people trying to talk me out of it. And um, by the end, I was pretty frustrated with it. And there were some heated conversations of me saying, no, this is what's going to happen. Okay. The time for advice is over. Um Two years of that is, is, is too much, okay? Maybe six months before, all right? You wanna do, for prep, you wanna do your, your research for your visa, okay? In Asia, you're looking at about $1,000 a year for a good visa. You really wanna do that. You wanna do your prep research for your tax situation. Talk to a good lawyer who specializes in expats for your country, as well as check out Nomad Capitalists, Andrew Henderson's terrific. Uh, flag theory has a bunch of case studies like so if you're from Australia and you have a business in this country you know I have a bunch of situations you might even look into a consultation or, or joining one of those guys forums because they have a bunch of good stuff um, you want to set your budget so do some research on how much it costs you can look at nomadlist.com or some of the blogs to get an idea of the budget in advance so that you know what your budget's going to be okay those are some of the things that you need to prep uh, you want to select your country, of course. I, I recommend nomadlist.com. It has the best rankings and it goes through everything from travel costs to banking setups to where to find an apartment to all this stuff. Really, really good site. Um, you want to be looking at weather, cost, dating, safety, fun, and uh, convenient lifestyle. The major destinations are Asia, Eastern Europe, and South America. Uh, I would not recommend South America for safety reasons. I've heard a lot of good things. And a lot of guys are fine. And, you know, if you choose it for a base, you'll probably be fine. But I don't like to take chances, man. For me, everything, 
everything comes down to my mission and I'm like, I, don't, I just don't want to be anywhere where I can compromise my mission. And living in Chiang Mai, I feel incredibly safe. I feel five times as safe as um, I would in, in Toronto. You can get in a lot of trouble over here if you go to the wrong bars and you mess with Thai people or you mess around with uh, Thai girls who have a Thai boyfriend. I mean, that can get you in some serious trouble, but when you just uh, keep your nose clean, keep your head down, it's very, very safe, except for the driving. And uh, it's it's cheaper, I would say, Asia, or if you have more money, Eastern Europe. Uh, but then again, Eastern Europe, you're looking at winters. They're not that cold, but still the the cost is more, and um, the winter for me is out. I've had uh, enough Canadian winters to last a lifetime. Um, Asia for me can't be beat, and it's really because of price. Okay, if you look at Nomad List, the top destinations are always Chiang Mai, Bangkok, Saigon, Ho Chi Minh, um, Kuala Lumpur. My buddy Phil from philhawksworth.com is in Kuala Lumpur. He loves it. I think that's his new base now instead of Chiang Mai. I might check that out. But really, it should your number one should come down to cost. Okay. Again, you're moving out to build a business. You're not here for the dating. You're not here for all the other stuff. You, you want to be able to live in a nice apartment that's cheap and have a nice quality of lifestyle that's cheap, okay? And I'm not talking about living in some, you know, $100 hovel. I'm talking about, like, this apartment here that you see, it's a small one, one bedroom, is about $300 a month. You can't really beat that outside of those countries that I mentioned. And, you know... You could find somewhere in, in Eastern Europe and yeah, you can pay a thousand and still do well, but you know, saving that seven hundred dollars a month or saving that fifteen hundred dollars a month is is all that can go back into your business. So the cost should be the number one 